the hammer. The hammer drove the stake deep, deep into its target. And the splatter, the splatter, the splatter of the blood upon his face, the ungodly howl, the ungodly howl of the creature and the blood, the splatter dripping down to his lip, cold, lifeless, like the undead thing. Horrifically, unbelievably, incredibly, the whole thing just began to break down, decompose, and turn to dust. In truth, it had been dead for a thousand years, perhaps, and now it suddenly looked at the stake having been driven in. It was over. Its ungodly shriek had echoed through the heavens, but now, now, it was turned into a fine, powdery, gritty, dirty emptiness falling down to the earth. Finally, the creature was dead after all these long centuries. No, that's not right. It had been dead all this time. It was the thing of the night, the undead. But like an ancient curse, purged by the coming of the light, it was gone now. Even the blood that had splattered on his face disappeared. The dust fell to the earth and some blew away. It was over. It was over. Like the banishment of the past, the banishment of superstition and all curses, the coming of the light, the creature of the night no longer was part of the world. It was over. It was done. As if the dawning of the modern age had finally begun here, there, now, with the hammer and the stake and the cold, lifeless, dead blood splattered on his face. The world would move on now. The creature of the night, the thing of myth, of legend, the thing that time had reduced to a seller of breakfast cereals and a parody and a cartoon. In all of its different facets and aspects, it was finally, finally gone. 500 more years passed. 500. The dawning of the modern age had not been so glorious after all. The achievements of mankind, however we rank them good or evil, the advancement of technology, none of it, none of it could have prevented what came. The thing from the sky, the comet, the asteroid, the rock, however you classify it or whatever you call it, scattered its remnants over the surface of the earth and the plague came, the plague. Eight billion dead. Most of the world rendered lifeless. The last few scattered remnants of people, perpetually sick, with nosebleeds and stumbling, with muscular problems, with all the remnants of the plague that had attacked the human genome, they stumbled along in the dark night of the Milky Way galaxy, longing for relief, for an answer for an answer to a prayer that would change the miserable existence in which they languished. The few of them left. What now? What now had become of their modern world, their utopia, their dream of technology and perpetual progress? What now would they do? As the human race steadily lumbered onwards towards what seemed inevitable extinction. Their glory behind them, misery ahead. What did they have now? The dark and superstitious seeming past was finally purged those 500 years before. The last creature of the night gone out into the dust. Just behind the old rickety shack on Grossman Road, Manchester, Michigan, a place name that meant nothing now in the post-catastrophic society that lumbered forward. The old age of superstition had ended and the modern world had dawned, it seemed, by the destruction of that last creature of the night, but now lumbering on in misery towards extinction. Not even realizing that they were in the same part of the world, not even knowing the story, 
having lost so much of their history there, there in a lonely field, a lonely laboratory, a lonely experiment, trying to grow food again in a dying wasteland. Something was sparked. There, when someone with their nose bleed, one of the lumbering, staggering, stumbling, perpetually bleeding and dying remnants of humanity, their blood on the soil, the dirt revived. Somehow or another, the undead organic matter of the soil revived. Somehow or another, this thing that refused to have its unlife blotted out of its unexistence and its undeath, this thing had affected the soil. The bygone centuries of superstition breathed new life into a new future. A lesson, perhaps, on forgetting the past, of driving it too deeply into the shadows. Food would be able to be grown again because of soil corrupted with the DNA of the last vampire. 